Welcome back to another Army 3D tutorial. Now this is part two of a two-part tutorial series on how to make a Flappy Birds video game. Now today we're going to be talking about a score system and how to finish up the game basically to make it a good playable game. Uh, so what we're going to do first of all is we are going to have to uh, block out the level uh, because right here we have uh, our procedural generated uh, platform but we also have a open top so our player can just fly up and down without any consequence and we're only going to uh, to show the restart button when the player dies and uh, so uh, we just well we need to block out the platform with borders so let's go ahead and do that right now press shift A and add in a cube press G and Z to bring it up and then just scale it on the X axis to uh, cover a good portion of the uh, uh, make sure the player is not able to get past it, that's more than enough. And uh, now we can press um, Shift D to duplicate it and bring it down for the bottom. So now we have a good uh, block for the player so he can't actually get away. Now these two things are going to kill the player. Let's actually bring that back up a tiny bit. Going out of the screen will kill the player and uh, well we would need a script for that so basically let's select our ground our border and go ahead and add a new logic tree a node tree and let's call this border now in this border script we are needing to add a couple of things uh, but the main thing to keep in mind is that this border script is going to be shared by two different objects the ground and this roof that we're going to add a border script to right now so let's go ahead, grab the logic node and select a border. So since uh, the uh, same trait is shared by two different objects, we're not going to be able to directly write in the name of the object we want to check. So when a volume collides with it, the volume would be the player. When the player collides with either the top or the bottom, it's going to uh, remove the player. So we're going to have to remove the object, remove the player. However, we can't exactly just eye drop one of these two because there's two of them and they both have the same script so let's go ahead and grab the self object node and that is going to allow us to uh, use uh, this script with two different objects or even more and uh, now we are going to um, well we're going to actually have to make a score system so what we're going to do is let's go over here to the uh, level and add in a new UI. Now let's go and create. Let's go and create a new canvas. And before we do anything, I prefer to adjust the width and the height to 1920 by 1080p, which is full HD if you didn't know. And now we can add in a text. Now in this text, we are going to uh, set it to be a score set it to be called score, that's its name and the actual text is going to be zero uh, because that's the default score that you'll start with, zero now let's augment the, uh, let's set the uh, alignment to be centered and augment the size to give it a much bigger view and uh, set the color to something a bit brighter, maybe a uh, maybe a green actually, a polo green that looks good okay now we can actually save this and exit now that we have a score we are uh, a UI score we need to actually have a way to uh, code it and to do that we need to be able to detect when our player has passed through these uh, these pillars so what we're going to do is we need to add a yet again another cube to be able to detect when the player has passed so let's go ahead and grab the cube scale it up really big so it's well above the actual camera level uh, and we can actually move it past these pillars so the player has to exit these pillars to be able to uh, actually increase the score okay so once that is done and the uh, the big score detector is outside of the pillar make sure it is well big it make sure it is very big so that when the platform is procedurally generated, never mind where the hole is, the score will always be behind it, so you'll always be able to detect whether the player has passed or not. 
Now what we want to do is we actually want to uh, generate this at the same time as the pillars. So it's going to duplicate these multiple times uh, as the game progresses. So let's go over to our scripting tab and where we have a previously made node tree from last video where we made a uh, the platform procedurally uh, generate with random um, locations we're actually just going to copy these three node trees excluding the random rotation and we're going to plug it into the same time node now we can remove the object uh, the uh, pillar that we added last time and we can replace it by this new mesh our score mesh if you like now we did put a random float uh, to find out a random place to put this on the z-axis in our case we don't want to do that we just want to leave it in the position where it is right now so as you can see it's 12 and 2 12 for the x-axis and 2 for the z-axis but that's not important uh, we don't really need to add it to on the z-axis because whether it's like that or like that either way it's big enough so now what we want to do is we actually want to add a script to make it move forwards because now it's going to spawn it at the uh, at the position where it's at now that's great but it's not going to move it forwards with the platform which is a problem so what we're going to do is we are going to add a yet again another script this one is going to be attached directly to the score detector and we're going to call it score underscore Det, whatever, how you pronounce that, as in detector. Score a detector. And uh, we are going to here add in, first of all, a on volume trigger. You should be comfortable using these by now. We're going to yet again use the self node because there uh, are going to be multiple instances of this because we added it to a spawn object. Spawn node, in fact and once it collides what it's going to do is it's going to increase the score so to do that we have to add a variable and we need to set this variable to uh, add a score to add a value to uh, to um, increment the score of plus one by plus one so let's go ahead and grab a math node so we can increment the score we can plug the result into the value and set the value to be plus one as in positive one instead of negative one that would uh, diminish the score and we need to actually get the scores value so we're going to grab an integer which will represent the score and plug that into the variable and into the top of the math node now right now this is uh, adding a, a um, plus one to the score however this is only doing it for this object basically it's going to score the integer on this actual object itself and that's not exactly what we want because we're going to have multiple instances of this object so each one is going to have plus one and then it's going to go back to its own variable and it's going to go plus one and plus one so in the end you'll just have one 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 they won't addition they won't um, add up all those ones it'll just be each time you collide it'll go from zero to one and then back to zero then zero to one and that's not what we want so basically what we want to do is we want to basically just take these press control C to copy them and then you can delete them and what we're going to do is we're actually going to score, store them inside of the player so in the player script the jump we're going to paste them here and uh, we haven't actually finished making the, the script yet so let's just finish making it right here we now need to show up the value we need to uh, um, display the value so let's go ahead and set the canvas text to be the integer as in for the text and plug it into the variable now the element in question is the one that we made previously in the canvas which is named score right here so we can call the element score and now that score element that we made in the UI is going to be uh, it's going to be um, well used to display the score However, we currently don't have a way to display the score because this is hosted in the uh, player script which is the same one used for making it jump. So let's go ahead back to the score detector and with this volume trigger we're going to add an event. So basically it's going instead of directly calculating the score in-house it's going to send out an event to the player and the player is going to calculate the score. 
So we can send out an event to the object and the event is going to be a score and we're going to send it to this object right here and that object is going to receive the event on the jump score uh, trait and we're going to receive the event called score and when it does it's going to add a plus one right here it's going to add plus one to the variable and display that to the UI and that is a score all finished up so now what we want to do is we want to actually uh, just go ahead and check everything is working and as you can see there is a slight problem of uh, the, uh, the levels not moving forwards because we didn't actually add in score detector we didn't actually tell it to move forward so it's not sticking with the pillars so let's go ahead and grab an on update node we can also grab a translate node and we have to make sure that the value inputted are the same as the values uh, for the moving the platform so they actually stick together if not this one will overtake it or will lag behind and so I believe the values for the pillars was 0.06 so let's go back to the score detector and input the same values and obviously we need to feed it back into the self node which is defining which object to apply all these actions to now that we have that we also need to do one last thing and that is to apply the actual position and scale of this object so let's go ahead and press control A press a rotation or just press a scale and press control A and location now we can set the origin back to the geometry and now that would fix that weird scaling issue that we would have had uh, as we um, generate multiple instances of the mesh now if we play again you'll notice that usually everything is working fine and here we go we have a score that is being increased on the top left hand side corner it's increased every time we collide with this white uh, volume so that's great okay so now what we want to do is actually set this invisible now that we know it works we don't actually want to see it so if we go ahead to the score and uh, go down to the level where we generated this platform right here it's been generated on this spawn node we do have an output socket one that has uh, that is accompanied by an object socket and that is very handy for right now so basically it allows you to apply different uh, actions to the uh, generated mesh which is perfect because we want to set it invisible so we're going to grab the set visible set object visible going to plug that into the spawner object spawner node and plug the object into the object and make sure you set it to uninvisible, to not visible, as in leave it unchecked. And now when we play the game everything will look much more smoother and uh, we wouldn't have big white blobs in the middle of the screen, which is perfect. However, as you can see we do have a problem. The score is increasing and we can't see the actual volume, but we could actually see the first one, which is a problem. Uh, so basically what we want to do is since this is a pre-made one and this script is only attached to the spawner object only the ones that are spawned after this are going to actually be applied by this logic node so we can actually just manually deactivate the visibility in the render right here by adding uh, the render filter toggling it and uh, you will be able to uh, set invisible like that okay so now I think it is time to actually go ahead and uh, save this project and now we can go and add a high score now this is something that needs to be followed by a button so let's go ahead and do that uh, we need to be able to restart the game and show the high score so first thing we want to do is make a restart button so add that a button and then down here let's go set the anchor point to be at the bottom we can actually scale this up a bit, not too wide something like that and we can move it up a bit more in the center we can set the button's name to be um, restart 
and we can set the button text to be the same thing restart so now what we want to do is we want to actually set the background color to be something like a green the hover to be something like a, a dark orange that looks nice okay now let's set this to be invisible save the project and go ahead and duplicate the score so let's duplicate it and set the anchor point to be centered in fact let's actually just set this visible so we can see and we don't overlap it and now we can scale this down we can also duplicate it, we can also rename it to a uh, score underscore h as in high score value and uh, the default value will be set to zero that's not a problem now let's duplicate it one last time and move it over and this one is going to be just a simple text and uh, we're gonna set it to be high score two dots yeah I think that will be good okay and uh, let's make it a bit bigger and move it forwards okay just play with the scale a little bit if I can okay like that and now we do have a high score that does seem a little big okay we have a high score I'm not gonna play around with it too, more, too much and uh, now you just need to make sure that you set all these elements invisible and make sure you remember the name as in this one is text this one is score H and this one is restart now you can save everything and exit. So let's add a new node tree in the scene tab. And this is just going to manage all of our UI. So let's call it um, menu. Menu. Okay. And basically, what we're going to do is when we have an event that is triggered, the event is going to be uh, the player's death. Call this death we are going to set the canvas to be visible set canvas visible and the canvas element is going to be the text as in for the high score and also the actual button which is called restart and finally we're going to also te set the uh, score underscore h underscore h which is the value of the high score and uh, now we have one last thing to do and that is to map this restart button to an actual event so we can actually restart the game because currently it's just an empty button so let's go ahead back to the canvas and grab the on canvas element which has a click function by default it's set to left click which is perfect and let's set the element to be the restart button and what we're going to do when that is clicked is we are going to restart the scene so let's go to this uh, scene tab and uh, set scene active and the scene that we're going to set active is the current scene the one that's already active so we're going to reset it to be active which is essentially restarting the scene so we're going to get scene active and we're going to plug that in so the scene that's active is going to reactivate itself and there we go now we have a perfect uh, little UI that's going to show up when the player dies however we haven't actually defined when the player does die so let's go ahead and do that we have a script for the border that can kill the player so let's go ahead to the border and add in a on death uh, event so let's go to the event and send event global and send the event death meaning when the object is removed we're saying out oh, the player is dead and that will allow us uh, to know and, and uh, show up the menu saying oh the player's dead okay let's put the menu up and tell the uh, button that when it's pressed you have to restart the game and we also have another way that the player can die and that is by touching the pillar and so that not, not only removes the player but we also have to make it um, send an event saying that the player is dead as well okay and now we have pretty much uh, finished uh, the UI so let's talk about uh, the actual high score uh, basically we want to be able to store it in a uh, well storage node so let's go ahead and grab the storage uh, read node 
also the storage write node and this is going to allow us to read the high score and this is going to let us write the new high score and so this integer is going to have to be compared between the one that's already written and well, what it is currently and if it is higher it's going to be saved and it's going to then become the new high score and then the loop continues and to compare two values, I've spoke about this before in my um, a conditions and logic video that I made a link in the description if you want I did uh, talk about something called the gate node and this allows you to do exactly what I said, it allows you to compare two functions so let's plug the first one, I mean the integer, as in the current score that you just obtained by playing the game and it's going to compare it with the score that's already been saved if this value is higher, as in if it is greater than the one that's already saved it's going to overwrite uh, this save value with this one so let's plug this new value into the value of the write score and the key is essentially basically like a file basically the name of uh, the the, the um, element that you're wanting to save we're going to call it score uh, this score is needing to be saved on itself what am I saying? The score, the integer needs to be saved on the file called the score. And um, yeah, that is pretty much it. However, we do need a trigger for the gate function. So let's go ahead and grab the score and plug it into the gate function. And now everything should be working fine. So let's go ahead and test it out. However, uh, we will have a few problems. I think. as you can see the player is working fine and the restart button is working as well uh, we do have a score that is being increased and uh, however when we collide with something the score isn't actually updated now the reason being we do actually need to set the score to uh, be visible as in this canvas node here we need to duplicate it down here and every time every um, every time uh, that we look at it uh, we need to set it to either be this this integer score or this read score and so let's plug the read score into the text and let's go ahead and grab a on update node and plug it into the set text and basically the reason we're doing this is because if this is higher we don't actually need to plug in directly because either way the score will overwrite it so that will become the new higher one so either way that one will become this one if it's higher so we can plug it directly into this one and now when we play it everything, everything should be working fine however you'll notice that it isn't working fine because I forgot to change the element the element I, uh, that I set is a number the score element, not the actual high score element. And that is a problem, so we need to set it to underscore h, my final mistake of the tutorial. And now we can press play and everything should be working fine. As you can see the score increases based on um, when it collides with the volume and when I die boom the high score is displayed my high score is of 4 so now I can press restart and I can try and get a new high score to make sure everything is working fine and there we go my new high score is of 5 so as you can see everything is working fine it's not the nicest UI I've made but honestly it doesn't matter because it's just to demonstrate I have made a much better version of this game as you can see right now on screen and I will make a tutorial about how to reskin a game because I really enjoy uh, just racking my brains around trying to figure out how to make different game mechanics and then finally sitting down for the final one and actually getting good 3D models that I make and then just adding all the logic onto and I think it's a great way to uh, to just have fun with Arm 3D without needing to uh, have a big computer because you can just model your entire, well, you can just mock up your entire game using these low poly uh, sorts of 
objects right here and it runs seamlessly uh, directly on whatever computer you have and then you can bring in your good 3D models and actually have a good looking game I just think it's a very useful way to uh, just start making your game so thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this tutorial make sure you click the subscribe button and the like button uh, to allow other people to view this tutorial and uh, thank you very much for watching once again and I'll see you in the next video